Hi, today I'll be talking about this paper, Trade-off Focused Contrastive Explanation for MDP Planning by Roy Krung Suckard, Reed Simmons and David Garlin. They're from CMU. The title gives away a lot of information about what this paper will be talking about. So there are three components to the title. First is this trade-off focused. Second is contrastive explanation. And lastly, it is MDP planning. Okay. So we've looked at a couple of other works previously, which talk about contrastive explanation and how they use it to explain the decisions of sequential decision making agents, uh, specifically in reinforcement learning scenarios. This paper is primarily focused at situations where the reward functions has competing objective. A driving agent can be like, I need to get to my goal in the least amount of time as possible. And I need to get to my goal as safely as possible. And we all know that if we increase our speed, for example, if I over speed, it is quite likely that I can crash. At least it is more likely that I'll crash into some other vehicle or something like that as against to if I drive, you know, maybe a bit slower than that. So it's something like this in this situation that either of the things if achieved would give me some reward. So getting to my goal in less least amount of time will give me some reward and getting to, to my goal safely is, is also rewarding. However, these two objectives, although rewarding, are competing and therefore when a decision has to be made which involves which which kind of looks at these two objectives as actually competing for example going to my goal in this scenario where these two objectives are competing then the agent as the authors point out in this paper has to explain its trade-off rationale right it's mentioned here and therefore the authors here say that we what we need to focus on in multi-objective planning scenarios, the agent has to provide an explanation for the decisions it took, which involved trade-off. So that was the brief. Now we'll just get into a bit more technical details about this paper. So exactly what is the style of explanation that we are choosing? So it is contrastive in this paper. That is, I will try to contrast the agent's decision to an alternate policy or to an alternate decision plan and then bring about the contrast between the two plans to highlight why I had to take this particular follow this particular route. The second part is who exactly is giving this explanation. As the authors pointed out in the abstract itself, it's a multi-objective MDP planning agent. So basically it's a sequential decision making agent whose aim involves achieving multiple objectives all at once and since these objectives can very well be competing in nature and therefore there has to be some trade-offs that the agent needs to take care of right so that's the explanation that we're going to talk about in this paper third question becomes what is the medium of explanation so here the authors would provide an explanation that is the agent will provide an explanation to the users in terms of domain level concept we've already talked about what concepts are when we looked at some previous papers concepts in general here mean human interpretable terminologies which are relevant to the domain somehow finally how are they going to show that all of this works is basically a set of user studies that they perform will will kind of skip through the evaluation part and focus more on the idea and motivation and the work itself Although the work does involve the evaluation, but we'll just skip that part for now. We've already looked at a lot of papers which talk about contrastive explanations. And well, the gist of it is that we have a plan, let's say A and some other plan B and contrast those two plans A and B and find out the differences between the two, which highlight the need for taking plan A over plan B, right? So plan A usually is the plan that is taken by the agent. So we already have that covered because we already have the policy of the agent. But what is B in this paper? So it's, it's different for different papers. But in this paper, they take a different approach because they have a different setting, which involves the agent trying to achieve multiple objectives. There are two parts to it. First is how do we get the B that is the other plan to which we will contrast the agent's plan. 
and second part is let's suppose we have this b then how do we how do we compare it so the second part is basically given in the introduction itself which is here which says that we will contrast the two plans in terms of their expected consequences of the solution that they give so if a is a policy and b is some other policy and i try to simulate this policy a i'll get some reward let's call it ra and i'll try to simulate b again and i'll get another reward which is rb right this can be either the cumulative reward or some some metric based on reward then i can compare these two reward matrices and just say that a is better or b is better based on these values this idea of explaining in terms of expected consequences i think it's from this paper contrastive explanations for reinforcement learning in terms of expected consequences by j van der waa et al i don't think that uh, the current authors of this paper have cited them anyways to give a brief about what the contribution is of this paper there are two things first is the trade off scenario as in the decision making would involve multiple objectives where one type of policy or one type of plan would have some objectives being better than other objectives and the other policy would have some other objectives which are better which is basically what trade off means the second part is we already have the policy a that is the agent policy we now want to achieve b and once we have b we can leverage the expected consequences stuff that we just discussed to compare a and b right so all that is remaining here is to get this b once we have this b we can we know how to compare so basically there are two things that we are yet to know about this paper first is how is this trade off actually formalized here and second is once we know how the formalization is for this trade off scenario how do we use it to compare as in we know that we can compare the rewards but you know we have to give some more insight to the users which is why we said that we'll use the domain level concepts or domain level human interpretable terminologies so we will basically look at that in the second part before we begin we can just let let's have a quick example to digest what we'll be talking about so let's say we have certain parameters like time intrusiveness and safety i'll just write it down here so these are the factors that we really care about right so these are let's let's say these are the objectives that i want to achieve i want to have the minimum time possible for an agent which wants to go from this x that is the starting point to this other x which is the end so left is the start and i can just write it like start and end right so i want the agent to move from s to e in the minimum time possible i want the agent to be least intrusive okay so let's suppose we have some objects like the brown ones here on the red dashed line and on the green dashed line and let's say for the sake of it for, for let's say for simplicity the more the ob the, the brown object are basically desks where people might be sitting the robot should not pass around them because the people might feel that their private space is being intruded we want the intrusiveness to be as minimum as possible so what it means that the robot ideally should take a path that is if i want to minimize intrusiveness the robot should take a path which has none of these desks at all right and third is safety which is kind of like intrusiveness but it's more about so the robot if it encounters some objects there is some probability that it will hit it and collide with it and therefore it's a lot less safer that way so even for the safety objective what we ideally want is that the agent takes a path which has absolutely like no brown object so as you can see there are two paths that i have marked in green and in red so these are the two paths let's suppose the agent has to choose between and take one of them as the final path let's say the agent actually chose the green one and the red one is an alternative and the agent is trying to explain why it did not choose the second one and rather chose the first one so what are the points that are in favor of choosing the green path well it's less intrusive and there is obviously less chances of having any collision so what are the pros of choosing the red path well it's shorter but that's it right so it will take less time 
we uh, remember we have to only talk about the objectives that we mentioned here we cannot go beyond these objectives and create some random new objectives <coughs> so what about the drawbacks of choosing either of the paths so if i take the green path then of course the time is pretty high so there is like the time is high what about if i take the red path well there are more objectives that are being violated if i take the red path well my safety is getting reduced because there are more objects in this path and and the intrusiveness increases like a lot because there are a lot of a lot of deaths in the in the path and i'll be crossing a lot of people and yeah that's bad so by the logic of this paper what is an example explanation that a robot could provide as its rationale the robot can say something like while the green path which i took takes longer time to travel than the red path which i'm trying to avoid it has lower intrusiveness and less chance of collision so something like so something like this makes sense to the people for for two reasons first of all i defined my explanation in terms of certain objectives so there are some objectives which do get achieved and there are some objectives which don't get achieved but well i i the agent well the agent ultimately has to choose a path and therefore has to choose a trade off that is choose some objectives over the other objectives so this is their idea like this is their first idea in this explanation second is the use of user understandable terminologies so the very fact that my objectives are called time intrusiveness or safety which is very domain relevant and which is very much human understandable this points that the reason this explanation was an explanation to me that is i could understand it is because it was in human understandable terms so what are the requirements that is the assumptions of this paper first is that we need the states and actions and all to be factor that is they should be represented as a vector of some features the second is that there is something known as quality attribute factors now these quality attribute factors has base are basically the objectives the term objectives that i've been using so in the example that we looked at the time or the intrusiveness or the safety concern these are all quality attributes and let's suppose let's let's assume that there is a way to measure this so we obviously know that there is a measure there is a way to measure time we can of course quantify some arbitrary metric for intrusiveness and maybe have some scale for safety and so on and so forth and ultimately we'll be able to measure all of these quality attributes so basically these quality attributes are the objectives that i am trying to achieve and the hope is that all of these are rewarding as in either i have to maximize these or minimize these or maximize a subset of these something like that so the idea here is to determine these objectives that i talked about in terms which we can formalize here and use for our explanations so the way they do it is they call these objectives as quality attribute factors and once we have these quality attribute factors let's say we can decompose the reward function let's say we can decompose the reward function in terms of these quality attribute factors so if i have a reward of 10 i can say that 3 came from me like me as an agent taking least amount of time five came from me as an agent being very safe and two came from me as an agent being very uh, being the least intrusive <laughs> being less intrusive so this idea is not new it's it's been looked at before in other papers and it's been called as reward decomposition so here they do the same thing that is they represent the <coughs> here they do the same thing that is they represent this cumulative value function as a linear combination they represent this 
complete value function or cost function as a linear combination of these quality attribute based value functions. So let's say we are here. So this ji represents the value given by this ith quality attribute. But how do we combine them? As I said, we can use a linear combination of these. So here they talk in terms of cost. So this cost is basically, well, the linear combination of these quality attributes. So now first we'll tackle the why question as in, let's suppose the user asks why this particular policy or why this particular sequence of actions, then the way this agent can explain is to compute the expected consequence. That is, you can simulate the policy and get these uh, sort of quality attribute value functions as in the JIs. So you have different JIs and which, which of course can be clubbed together to give you the final value function. But you have these JIs so you know exactly which objective or which quality attribute contributed how much your explanation can contain this this information that I did this because I was achieving this objective. So they don't really give out much information, but it's also implied that you can use this to fill in a natural language template to provide the explanation. The more interesting part is the contrastive explanation of trade offs. So as I said, now we have the formalism. So as I discussed here, we need it we needed two things. First is this formalism for this trade-off scenario. We already have that from quality attributes. The second thing is we need two policies to contrast. First is of course the agent policy which we have. The second is this other alternate policy which will get from somewhere. In other works the human may give it or some, some other entity might give it. Here, the authors have taken a different kind of approach to get this alternate policy. And once we have this policy, we are pretty, I, I hope we are pretty clear how we are going to contrast them. You just look at how like the difference, you just look at the differences in terms of these quality attributes or objectives and just convey to the user by filling up a natural language template. So here, all, all that is left for us to do is come up with this B. So the way the authors in this paper come up with this alternate policy is by obtaining a Pareto optimal subset of alternate policies. So Pareto optimal is when all the objectives that I'm trying to achieve are sort of as best as they can be to give me the best result. So changing any of those features would worsen at least one other objective to make some particular objective better. The final explanation could look something like this here in green. That is, well, I, the agent can say, I can definitely improve these sets of quality attributes by carrying out this alternative policy, but this would definitely worsen this existing set of quality attributes that I have by executing the current policy. Well, I decided not to do this alternate policy because the improvement that I would get in the other quality attributes is not worth the deterioration in these current quality attributes that I have at their optimal or at a better place. Well, this makes sense because all we are talking about is in terms of quality attributes, which essentially says doing this other thing will definitely worsen off this set of quality attributes that I already have achieved. And even though it might bring me some better results for specific other set of quality attributes, I don't think it's worth it. So finally, this part is where the authors figure out how to get this alternate policy. So the basic idea is that I will try to improve one of the quality attributes at a time by some measure, which finally improves the overall policy by some delta i for the ith quality attribute. And doing this basically means that I have a new MDP, which is this other tuple and which has a new wherein I did not weigh the 
I like so these all of these C's are the cost so the cost of achieving this this particular ith quality attribute is much lower than before so the so the solver would not penalize having this particular type of quality attribute in the solution right as it did before we would have this new policy after solving this mdp which would be better off in some particular quality attribute now i have this b and i can contrast with my a the way they the way the authors solve this new mdp is through mixed integer linear programming we don't need to go into a lot of detail about what milp is but they have given a few equations well they have given the equation of the constrained mdp that you are trying to solve so the basic idea is that this is my objective where this is my cost function and i am iterating over all the states and actions and i'm trying to minimize this whole thing and such that there are certain constraints to it for example like all the states should have same number of in edges and out edges there should be at least one extra out edge in the initial state and so on and so forth these are basically some constraints and finally there is this constraint that the final cost should be less than this theta value as in my increase this particular formalism is based on this delta i value that i want this delta i improvement in the value of the solution policy right and this happens when theta i is the value of this q a i that is quality attribute i so as they correctly point out here that defining this delta i is critical here because you can have it really small which would finally end up giving policies which are quite similar to the policy a that is the agent's policy so the idea is to have delta i is little larger so that there is certain amount of significant difference between the agent policy a and this alternate policy b so that there is something to contrast otherwise even though it's different they're not that different that it it gives out any useful details to the user as an explanation finally they relax this theta i constraint as in make it a soft constraint instead of a hard one they do so by having this penalty function here they add this penalty function to the objective of milp where whenever basically whenever you violate this theta i constraint you'll just be penalized again and again another thing that they point out here is that although there is this constraint here that is the qa value should be less than this theta i value it can be relaxed the way they do it is that it's not really necessary that it has to be less than theta i what it has to be less than is what the qa value is in the current agent's policy because i'm trying to explain that the current agent policy is the best one so as long as it as it's less than that it's just fine again all of this can be a bit overwhelming if you do not know about milp and i do not recommend reading this section uh, that carefully all you have to know to get an idea about this paper is that we are trying to solve these other set of mdps in in a way let's say through milp and the solution policies would then be contrasted with the agent policy to give us the explanation the way we come up with these alternate policy can be made better by choosing different types of penalty functions or choosing different types of theta i values and even the authors say that it is beyond the scope of this paper to discuss a lot on these things so finally we are left with empirical evaluation i'll just skip it for this video if people feel like discussing it we can just discuss it at some point later on but i think the major idea was to discuss what the contribution of this paper is as in what are their motivations and what is what is exactly what they're trying to do so thank you and you can just post any questions that you have on this paper